everybody. I don't look nervous, right? <laughs> um, hi, everybody. My name is David Suck. I am a designer at The Lighting Practice. Um, as a lighting designer, I've had the opportunity to work on a lot of really cool projects. And one of the more unique project types that I've come across uh, is underpasses. Looking at this photo that I took at 9 o'clock in the morning, it's easy to see why lighting is important to this kind of space, both in the daytime and also especially at night. Philadelphia's infrastructure includes miles of above ground roads and passages like the I-95, uh, the SEPTA's regional rails, the L, and bridges to provide convenient access in and out of Center City. And while the trains and cars and motorized vehicles move above streets, pedestrians are left to walk through the underpasses. <clears throat> The Delaware River Waterfront Corporation, as you saw previously, identifies 38 connecting streets, and out of those, 32 go underground. And looking at the, the map above, these underpasses do provide functional access from one side to the other. However, the heavy concrete and metal structures often impose themselves as a visual barrier. As a result, you might divide the city from its waterfront or from one neighborhood to another. In neighborhood surveys, people often comment that they don't feel safe in these kinds of spaces, uh, that they are seen as hot spots for trash dumping, drug use, and other kinds of illicit activities. And with the focus so heavily on what's happening above, the spaces below are often overlooked and forgotten. But this is Philadelphia. Philadelphia is vibrant, beautiful, and it's filled with amazing designers who are so talented and able to take places that are often forgotten and transform it into something that is truly amazing, into really amazing works of art. We have just as much art on the street as we do in our museum walls. <clears throat> where some would see an ordinary space, like this alleyway, where it t the intention is just to carry someone through, it can be reinvented into a space where people can gather. In the same way, an underpass that is seen as dark and scary can be reinv reinvented into something that has really unique properties, whether it's shelter from the elements, shading, uh, acoustics, or what some would even consider a large blank canvas. So organizations like the Delaware Waterfront Corporation, Community Design Collaborative, and so many more that I don't even know all of them, are teaming up with local communities and designers to fully utilize these spaces and reclaim them for their full potential. Sometimes the, easy is, sometimes the answer is as easy as a fresh coat of paint. For decades, the Mural Arts Program has been working together with community members to create pieces of art that not only beautify a space, but also help to provide a sense of identity in a surrounding neighborhood. Just a little bit north of here, in the Callow Hill Chinatown North neighborhood, the Asian Arts Initiative takes full advantage of the acoustical and daylighting pro daylight control properties of the underpass on Pearl Street, hosting pop-up events with projectors and music, music, turning it into a pretty cool venue and a destination. And as previously mentioned, Say, I've said it quite a few times now, the Delaware River Waterfront Corporation is a major advocate for reimagining these underpasses. Lighting and graphics are used under this heavy infrastructure of the highway to lead you toward the waterfront, where you'll be met with the peaceful retreat of the pier. <coughs> Even before reaching the pier, the LED screen provides a live stream of the river to give you a visual connection. And just a few blocks north of there, the Spring Garden Station for the L uh, where plenty of people pass through every day, is a pretty long, ominous tunnel, which is very utilitarian in its use. However, however utilizing color-changing LED lights, this boring, drab space is transformed into an extra extraordinary space that reflects the vibrant, energetic feel of Northern Liberties. It's working on projects like the Spring Garden Connector, where it could really see another side of technology. And as we talked about just in the presentation before, there's a lot of data out there, and there's a lot of technology that's picking up a lot of stuff. And as this digital infrastructure continues to grow and penetrate deep into our lives through Alexa and the Internet of Things, it gains a reputation of one that isolates. However, in the summer of 2016, an app called Pokemon Go revealed creatures and beacons all over the world that changed the way I saw the world forever. Not because they're Pokemon, and there's one under that chair right over there, but because I saw that this app was a way that moved people. <clears throat> As the more you played the game, uh, there would be these in-game events where if you want better rewards, you needed to team up with a group of people. Um, bringing complete strangers together to otherwise ordinary spaces like this open parking lot. <clears throat> so, what's next? What, how can we take all of these really cool technologies and apply it to our underpasses? How can we turn somewhere that's just 
somewhere to pass through, but turn it into a destination where we can hang out and do cool stuff. Similar to Pokemon Go, what if you had a checkpoint like Foursquare or Facebook where if you have 10 or more people, a projector would start to play a, a movie. In the daytime, you might be able to play something a little bit more fun and light. In the dark, if you're really into that kind of thing, it could be a cool place to watch a spooky movie. <laughs> For something a little bit more interactive through thermal imaging, uh, an underpass could behave according to how many people pass through. Um, if it's just one person, you could have a single color providing a low ambient glow, just enough that you feel comfortable. You bring another person, you might get another color, and the more people and the more energy you felt, the more lights that you would have to correspond to that. <clears throat> or to go another step further, what if the whole underpass became a game? What if you could play a game like Flappy Bird, Snake, uh, Pong if you wanted to play two players, or maybe something that relates to the, to the underpass and something that doesn't exist out there today? <clears throat> the possibilities are endless. So what do you see? Uh, I'm hoping now that ev after everything that I've gone through, you're not just seeing an empty space. Are you seeing a basketball court? Are you seeing a farmer's market? Or are you seeing um, the largest game ever where you could digitize the cars of the I-95 so you could play a game like Frogger? If you play during, <laughs> if you play during the rush hour, that's definitely the easy mode. <clears throat> so I hope you're excited. I hope you go out there and look for your underpasses if you have one in your neighborhood and you think of all the cool things that you can do with it. Thank you.